Hi there, this is my final video featuring the ELAD FDM S3. Um, it's time to pack it up and send it back to Martin Lynch and Sons who lent it to Radio User Magazine in the first place for me to um, conduct the tests and write the reviews. Um, it's been a very interesting experience using this radio from the first unboxing, um, just realising the quality of the materials used and components and the weight of it, uh, clearly a very, very... Uh, professional uh, and uh, piece of hardware and looking at some of the specifications in terms of the superb levels of stability with the various options uh, for the uh, in, uh, clock reference whether it was internal or via the uh, GNSS uh, satellite signal or an external 10 megahertz reference uh, allowing this receiver to track signals for very long periods of time uh, to uh, a very precise level for millihertzing um, or recording very large bandwidths of signals um, up to 24 megahertz. Um, the, the, the numbers, the specification uh, and the numbers uh, are incredible. Um, it's you know a very very top end uh, SDR receiver. There's no there's no doubt about that. Um, in terms of actual actually operating the receiver, exactly the same as you would an S2 or a Duo. Um, I operated it using the FDM SW2 uh, software uh, version 3.47 uh, in exactly the same way as I use my other ELAD and which gives you an almost infinite uh, number of ways of conditioning the signal that you're listening to, audio bandwidth filtering etc etc. Um, it's a superb piece of software and uh, you operate the S3 in exactly the same way as you do the Duo uh, and the uh, other ELAD uh, SDRs. Um, in terms of absolute performance, uh, in, in, in the real world, what you're looking for is, of course, dynamic range, sensitivity, selectivity, etc. And having tested the S3 on long wave through medium wave into HF, there is no, there's no difference in performance between the two radios that you're looking at right now. In terms of sensitivity... I couldn't find anything tangible to separate them. Same with selectivity. Selectivity is user-defined anyway. Um, and in terms of dynamic range, uh, overloading or, or susceptibility to overloading, etc. Uh, uh, IMPs, etc. Nothing at all. So fundamentally, these radios, which are designed to listen to uh, copy weak signals, etc., um, perform in exactly the same way. Now, does that create a problem for the S3? Well, maybe it doesn't, because at the end of the day, if the reference is the Duo, um, the Duo is one of the best SDRs ever made. It's as simple as that. Does it represent the best value for money as a, if you take performance as a function of price? No, it doesn't. Um, you know, you can buy an SDR Play RSP DX, which probably offers about 98% of the performance of an FDM Duo. It's actually, in some certain respects, better than the Duo, and it's about a quarter of the price. Um, so the Duo doesn't represent good value for money, necessarily, um, but it is nevertheless one of the best uh, SDR receivers ever made. And the S3, in those respects, is identical to it which means it's also one of the best SDR receivers ever made um, if you're if you are looking at sensitivity selectivity dynamic range etc etc uh, and then on top of that with the S3 you now have unparalleled levels of stability and you have unparalleled uh, options for uh, a very large bandwidth uh, recording and uh, which makes the S3, as I said, a premium product. What's interesting is that the price of the FDM Duo TX version, which is what I have, is basically, which within a couple of quid, the same as the S3. So they, as I said before, they seem to be, well, they are attacking the same market because the market is SDR radio, but they're also are focusing on different areas subsets of that market the s3 is clearly um, focusing towards 
a small group, I suppose, relatively speaking, DXers that are into uh, all the, the sort of latest innovations and developments in DXing, millihertzing, you know, tracking signals very, very precisely for many hours, collecting terabytes of data. And the duo is um, trying to engage with uh, the, um, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, again, the upper echelons of the market in terms of price, but with a very, very flexible SDR um, that can be operated as a black box, uh, but can also be operated as a, as a traditional receiver. And so, um, so where you have absolute performance, if you if you if you if you also consider stability and um, and bandwidth versus a radio, a very very similar similarly performing radio, but has got a front panel and you can use it without a computer. So so in the end, the fact that fundamentally the performance of the S3 is identical to the Duo isn't. I don't suppose it really is a problem. The, que the question is, if you had a Duo, would you buy an S3? And the answer to that might be no, uh, unless you specifically wanted to engage with the, as I said, these new developments in millihertzing, etc. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't. I, I don't think you would, because you're getting everything you need to the same level of performance with a Duo as you would if you bought an S3. Um, and if you didn't own either, which would you which would you buy? Well, for ultimate performance, everything taking everything into consideration, you might buy the S3. Well, you probably would, but for, uh, for very you know for, 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 for identical sort of fundamental performance, um, but also with an option to use the, a radio without a computer, then you would buy the Duo. So. You know, in a way, although they're similar sort of broadly uh, in terms of what they're trying to achieve, um, they don't. They sort of having these two radios in Elad's product range. They do sort of complement each other, I suppose, in a way. Um, I'm, I'm sure there there are there there are DXers out there who bought an S3 having owned a Duo, um, uh, um, and what will be interesting uh, is whether. In the end, they sell the duo because the S3 has given them what they want. I don't know. It, for me, I wouldn't sell my duo uh, and buy an S3. And I wouldn't buy an S3 and keep the duo. So for me, the S3 isn't really a radio that, that I would be interested in. Um, but that's because I've got 98% of an S3 in the duo anyway. Um, and the fact, and I'm not really, for me, recording 24 megahertz of bandwidth isn't something that I would ever do. Um, so uh, so it doesn't really offer me um, anything in addition to what I need um, and, and what I get from, from the duo. So so there you go. So uh, very interesting to play with the S3 for a few weeks. Um, and I, I guess I'm not surprised. I wasn't expecting the S3 to be a huge step up in in performance uh, from the duo in terms of what you can actually hear in terms of what stations you can copy um, I was expecting it to be to be similar was I, I, I was probably expecting it to maybe to be slightly better um, but I wasn't expecting a kind of step change in that and, and there wasn't one um, so uh, so no surprises there um, yeah none at all really um, just overall a superbly engineered uh, SDR receiver and because it's as good as the duo um, you know and but offers additional benefits it's the s3 it, it joins that kind of elite group of one of the best SDRs pr probably ever manufactured um, but it also it's also in that same group for probably in terms of value for money one of the worst I would say compared to um, other products um, but there you go with Elad they build devices that people want to own you know uh, I can remember when I first saw the duo thinking wow that is amazing that's a full-blown SDR and it's a radio and um, Elad have a way of marketing their products 
creating DXing lifestyle choices that um, that we that we don't seem to be able to refuse. And um, and for years they've been selling these radios with you know excellent performance levels, um, but actually quite poor value for money in terms of how much money you're going to spend when you buy one of these compared to what you could buy. Um, but people keep buying them because um, people love eLab products. Um, and so, you know, that bearing that in mind, I'm sure the S3 will sell very well. Um, and probably the Duo, if it stays, in, if they keep selling it, will, will also continue to sell well. Um, whether the S3 cannibalizes Duo sales or not, I don't know, uh, possibly. Um, uh, and that isn't really great news for Elad. What they really need is for the S3 to be developing uh, new spaces in the SDR market and moving into that space. Um, but uh, only time will tell. From my point of view, it's been a pleasure to uh, to run with the S3 for a few weeks. Um, and as I said, yeah, but it's a great radio, but it, there's been no real eye openers with it. Um, it's kind of what I expected. Um, but, uh, you know, and even even considering the price, I still feel, come away from the experience feeling very positive about the S3. Um, and uh, I'm sure that as with its predecessors, it'll, it'll sell very well. So, uh, so there you go. So that's my kind of overall summary. Um, there's not much more to, there's not much, really much more to add in terms of the specifications. I mean, they're all over the internet, so I don't need to really talk about that. You know, um, I just think that, uh, yeah, I just wanted to basically summarise, you know, where I was with it. Um, and, uh, you know, and although it, it, this definitely isn't a radio that I would buy, uh, I do understand why some people might want to do, might want to buy it, particularly those that are kind of in the more sort of technical areas of our hobby um, who require a very, very stable uh, receiver that can operate and record very large bandwidths of, uh, of spectral data. So, uh, so there you go. Okay, well, that's my summary. I'm going to pack it up now and uh, send it back, and uh, and that'll be that. Thanks very much. Seventy three.